Huh. Ain't that a kick in the head? Ugh, sorry, Lugie in the throat. Originally released for the Xbox way back in 2005, Stubbs was a game novel for letting you play as one of gaming's signature monsters, the undead. A reverse horror game, if you will, that wasn't afraid to be all sorts of silly. <laughs> Recently, the game was re-released for modern consoles, and seeing as I missed this one back in the day, I figured now was the time to channel my inner thriller and chew on some craniums. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Kirk, and today we are sharing shambling into Stubbs the zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse to see if this one was worth reanimating. But before all that, please be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for more videos full of festering corpses. Alrighty, let's get moaning. <laughs> Developed by Wide Load Games and published by Aspire, in Stubbs, you control Stubbs, a newly resurrected zombie running amok in the retro-futuristic city of Punchbowl. Stubbs is all about roaming, fighting, and eating in large open environments, all in the name of love. As said in the intro, the game was originally released for the first Xbox, and was made with the Halo engine of all things. Not surprising, as one of the founders of Wide Load Games was also a co-founder of Bungie. You can definitely see that Halo code at work with the game's vehicles that control almost identically to the Warthog, and some similarities in the game's camera system, as well as the open environments. Stubbs was a moderate success back when it came out, and has gained a cult following in the years since. A sequel was planned, but sadly never came to be, as Wide Load itself shut its doors back in 2014. Now with this re-release, one can't help but wonder if this is a sign of Stubbs' return in some sort of follow-up, something that undoubtedly will excite its longtime fans. However, from what I've played, it might be best to keep those expectations in check. Ah! Ah! Oh my god! There's no real objective in Stubbs other than getting to the end of the level. You're essentially unleashed on the unsuspecting masses and simply told to be safe and have fun. Good advice all around if you ask me. Eat brains, make zombies, and watch them attack people to make even more zombies. And Stubbs isn't afraid to get his hands dirty either. <laughs> But it's not all running around, smacking, and chomping. Stubbs also has a variety of biological abilities that the player can use to get the upper hand. You can cut an epic zombie fart to stun a group of enemies. Oh. Gas attack! You can throw your own putrid organs that explode like grenades, rip off your hand to take control of people, which is pretty handy. And the final and most devastating ability is twisting off your own head and bowling down the baddies. To use your powers, you have to eat a certain amount of brains indicated on the HUD. Gut bombs and hand controls take the least to fill, while the bowling heads takes the most, which makes sense as it's the most powerful ability. The abilities are fun to use, particularly the gut bombs, which were always fun to stick on the poor citizens of Punchbowl, not too dissimilar from Halo's plasma grenades. The only one I have complaints about is the mind-controlling hand. Not so much in the ability itself, but rather my complaints lie in the shooting mechanics of your hosts. Hosts control sluggishly, and weapons take a long time to reload, often leaving you frustratingly vulnerable. And sometimes when you take control of a human on a turret, the camera is positioned in a way so you can't see your target. Some of this makes sense. You don't want the host to be overly capable or too powerful as it runs the risk of breaking the game. But at the same time, while you're never required to take control of anybody other than when you first receive the ability, there are plenty of situations in the game where this is your best course of action, and every time it felt like a chore to do. Kill me! Someone please kill me! Oh lord! Oh no! I'm going to go ahead and rip off the band-aid now and say that overall, Stubbs' gameplay was a disappointment to me. That gradually lost focus as the game progressed. Admittedly, going in, I did have the expectation of this game being a sort of zombie version of Pikmin, where I could control hordes of zombies to ravage the pink, tasty humans. But immediately, I found that my control over the zombies was limited. I could only whistle to have them come to me and push them out of the way or towards enemies. And the zombies weren't always great about listening to me. Granted, they are zombies, but I figured I would have more control over them as they are initially presented as a central aspect of the gameplay. Nevertheless, the first act of the game is a nice balance of using your zombie hordes to take down innocent people and doofy cops. And while your zombies typically have the upper hand, the humans can still win the day if you're not careful. This is when Stubbs was at its best. 
but it's when the game introduces the gun-toting rednecks that things start to go downhill. The rednecks have accurate, powerful, hit-scanning weapons, with a lot of stopping power, and despite my best efforts, they were able to make short work of my walking dead, often forcing me to take cover and try to sneakily take them out with my abilities, only risking leaving cover to recharge said abilities, praying I wouldn't succumb to the many bullets hitting me. It wasn't terribly fun. To be fair, there were times I could use my abilities in clever ways to get past tough portions, like taking control of a sniper to clear my way. But these moments were fleeting. <laughs> Unfortunately, this trend continues throughout the game, as more powerful enemies are introduced who can deal with your zombies with ease, shifting the game's overall focus to hit-and-run attacks and keeping to cover. This isn't necessarily bad, but it's nowhere near as fun as the zombie rampaging found at the beginning of the game. Worse yet, while your abilities are effective and fun, Stubbs' melee attack is mediocre at best. It's erratic, at times totally unresponsive, and the hit detection is very spotty. Plus, enemies are typically able to get a quick shot in on you. No, there's no way to block or dash out of the way. I know Stubbs is a zombie. It doesn't mean he has to control like one. And since you'll typically need to soften up enemies before you can eat their brains, which I'll remind you refills your abilities, you'll have to engage in this substandard melee combat often. But I think the overall biggest shame of this game is that the zombies themselves become less and less important. <laughs> Honestly, by the end, they were glorified byproducts of me recharging my abilities. They weren't very useful at all, and the game loop truly becomes hide and use abilities when you can. Perhaps the developer felt like this was the best course to make the game more challenging. But like I said, it just feels like the game loses focus. My leg! Oh, a head-scratcher for me was that Stubbs has you playing in these large, open environments that are mostly empty. At most, there was maybe a little over a dozen of the zombies and cops all together at one time. Enough to make things feel horde-like, but not enough to make these environments feel any less empty. And traveling through them on foot gets old fast. Yes, there are vehicles, but not as often as you'd think. My guess is that the devs couldn't populate these streets further out of fear of making the OG Xbox explode, which I understand, but why make these environments so big in the first place if we're never able to take full advantage of them. Plus, if you ask me, Stubbs' gameplay felt a lot stronger in smaller environments. Obviously, there are still a few bugs to work out, which is why we need to start dissecting you immediately. There's a few boss fights in the game. None of them are very good. One particular buggy fight has you going up against a mad scientist in a jetpack. I'm not sure if he's supposed to get stuck here and let me kill him, but that's what happened. My least favorite is the second boss fight against this big oaf with a chainsaw. Once again, Stubbs' attacks are erratic and sometimes unresponsive, making it very easy for this guy to cut you to shreds. You can stagger him, but this seemed to happen at random. And while yes, using your abilities is more effective, you're only given a couple of humans to chomp on to charge them. So before long, you'll have to resort to upfront attacks, hoping you will stagger him and not lose too much health in the process. There are zombies to back you up, but they don't stand much of a chance. And with this guy's bloated HP making this fight last way longer than it should, this was easily the lowest point of the game for me. Something to keep in mind about this release is that it's not a remaster, it's just a port. A port of what I assume is the PC version of the game. The expected upsides are that the game runs at 1080p at 60 frames per second. The downsides are that all of the assets, as far as I can tell, are the original ones from 2005. Nothing has been improved here. The only high quality assets added are the new button prompts and hints, which mostly succeed at pointing out that the rest of the UI is still drawn for low resolution screens. Not great. It isn't all bad. Some of the character models still look pretty good. The design of Stubbs himself I think is pretty strong. I like his goofy zombie expressions and cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Not to mention the giant chunk missing from his side where you can see his intestines hanging out. And there's some nice detail on the zombies themselves, like the bullet holes riddling the zombie cops. The gore effects are also wonderfully over the top. Geysers of blood and chunks of pink brains flying everywhere. The environments haven't held up as nicely though. Pretty basic looking, made worse by how empty they are. Although the specular highlights on the textures still look pretty nice. My overall problem though with the visuals is that the game insists on having this drab green filter over the gameplay, which is jarring against the vibrant, colorful cutscenes. <laughs> I suppose this is meant to represent Stubbs' zombie point of view, but I would have much preferred to play the game without this, and unfortunately, there's no option to turn it off. 
Even Stranger, the game's tutorial, doesn't have this filter at all. And yeah, it looks way better, at least to me. I also ran into several audio issues, in particular missing sound effects, like this scene where you can take control of a weaponized tractor that emits zero sound. <laughs> There was also a frequent bug where enemies would get stuck mid-air waving their arms around. But above all else, what drove me crazy about Stubbs was the frequent crashing. In just about every play session, I experienced a crash, sometimes multiple. In fact, the last time the game crashed on me was right at the ending when the credits began. All this indicates to me is that this port was likely a rush job with not enough QA put into it. Now for transparency, I did play this on my PlayStation 5 through Back Compat, and while I think it's unlikely, there could be a chance the crashes stem from that. I tried to look into it online and did find other users experiencing crashes, but couldn't clarify what systems they were on, so take that criticism as you will. Either way though, it was an irritating issue, and overall, I can't imagine a longtime Stubbs fan being happy with the state of this port. Brand, brand. Brand. So was there anything I did like about Stubbs? Yeah. I thought it was funny. Brains, brains, brains. Stubbs is a darkly silly and humorous game with a veneer of sanitized 1950s wholesomeness, which I thought was pretty effective. Ted would have wanted it this way. I watched him die. Yeah, like three hours ago. The overall plot is the type of ridiculous that I can appreciate, and the humor often reminded me of the type of shows you'd see on Adult Swim. In fact, if Stubbs was made today, I wouldn't be shocked if they were the ones who published it. It's right up their alley. Hey! Want me to look under the hood? No! Not all of the jokes land, and some of the humor is out of date, but the lines said by the citizens of Punchbowl often made me giggle. My penis! I mean, arm! Was it enough to save the game for me? Sadly, no. I wanted to like Stubbs. It has so many things I typically enjoy. Zombies, farts, and of course, love. But it just didn't do the trick for me. The gameplay, while initially fun, loses itself partway through. The stability is questionable, and I do think it's a shame this wasn't given the proper remaster treatment. Now I do know there are people out there who have some nostalgia for this game, and I would say if you're dying to replay this and have no other way to do it, and can tolerate some crashes, then knock yourself out. As far as I can tell, this is the same game you enjoyed back in 2005. But for everybody else, I think this one is best left in the ground. Please be sure to let me know your thoughts on Stubbs in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get notifications on future videos. And be sure to join the Kirk Collects Discord linked in the description below. Looking for a quality reverse horror game? Be sure to check out my review on Carrion. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.